Hello internet friends! This week I want to talk about the Fault in Our Stars movie, and fair warning, there will be spoilery spoilers for both the movie and the book. One of the problems with movies that are based on books that I really, really, really love is that I always have really high expectations for them, and they never quite reach those expectations, except for Deathly Hallows Part 1. That's kind of the exception to the rule there. On the whole, I thought The Fault in Our Stars was a really good adaptation from book to movie, but it wasn't perfect and it wasn't all that I was hoping it would be. But probably there's really no way that it could have been all that I was hoping it could be. One thing that surprised me is that I didn't cry nearly as much as I thought I would. The first time I read The Fault in Our Stars, I absolutely bawled. And then when I read it again last summer for Nerdfighter Book Club, I cried a little bit. And then when I read it again just recently because I wanted to read it again before the movie came out, I really didn't cry at all. But I thought that seeing it on the big screen would have a really strong effect on me. And it didn't. There are only a couple of books and movies that really make me cry every time I read or watch them. Pretty much it's the last three or four chapters of Deathly Hallows and then Raising Helen and Stepmom. To start with something positive, I thought everything in the movie looked perfect. The characters looked really, really great. I thought all of the casting was spot on, and the actors did a really great job with the material that they were given. The only place I really felt the acting was lacking at all was at Gus's pre-funeral in the church with Hazel and Isaac. Isaac did an amazing job, Nat Wolf is so wonderful, but I felt like Shailene didn't quite get it. That was probably the place in the book where I cried the hardest, both the first and second time that I read it, and I really, really wanted Hazel's eulogy for Gus to be absolutely perfect, and Shailene just didn't really move me there. I cried a lot for Isaac's, but I didn't cry for Hazel's. All the sets were excellent, all the costuming was excellent, everything really, really looked and felt like it should, and I was really happy about that. The problems that I had with this movie were mostly down to the writing. One of the problems with turning a book into a movie is length, because really a book can be as long as you need it to be in order to tell the story properly, but a movie really has some finite limits on how long it can be, how long people are willing to sit there, and how much money you can spend on it. So of course this leads to scenes from the book not making it into the movie, and there were some really great scenes that I really wanted to see in the movie and they got cut because they weren't really, really essential to the story. Unfortunately, movies always kind of get pared down and subplots get shaved down, which is part of why Isaac has such a small role in The Fault in Our Stars, which made me sad because Nat Wolf just was so perfectly Isaac and I wanted to see so much more of him because he's such an interesting character in the book and Isaac and Gus have this great bromance in the book that just doesn't really shine through in the movie. To me, the movie felt a little choppy because I had just recently reread the book and there were all these scenes that I was looking for and they weren't there and so it kind of felt like we went from thing to thing to thing and there were some natural connections missing. If I hadn't read the book, it might not have felt that way, I don't know. One of the scenes that I was totally expecting and I actually teared up in anticipation of it and then it wasn't there was the scene where Hazel and her mom go to Gus's house to pick him up to take him to the airport to go to Amsterdam and you hear Gus and his parents fighting and Hazel's mom is like, let's go back to the car. I was expecting for that scene to come, but of course in the movie it's replaced with Gus showing up in a limo, which is a totally different kind of feel for that scene. One of the reasons that I can think that they might have cut the scene where you hear Gus and his parents fighting through the door is because that might have seemed too obvious in the movie. In the book, you kind of absorb that scene but then you forget about it and you move on in the excitement of Amsterdam and you don't really think about it and then when you find out that Gus is sick it's like oh in the movie that might have come off as too obvious but then I was disappointed when they were in Amsterdam when Gus asks for time alone with Hazel so that they can just talk and Hazel's mom is like yeah okay whatever I was really hoping that she would give some indication that she knew Gus was sick because in the movie, presumably, she didn't know that Gus was sick the whole time they were in Amsterdam, whereas in the book, she clearly did. And that just really gives such a whole different flavor to the Amsterdam trip, that Mrs. Lancaster went on this trip with Hazel and Gus, knowing that Gus is really sick, that he's gonna have to tell Hazel this. It just changes it so much, and I didn't really like that. Gus, in general, I thought, did not come across as well in the movie as in the book. Just nobody can write him like John Green does. I mean, yeah, he's pretentious in that really lovable way, and that comes across in the movie, but there's really only one scene in the movie where Hazel and Gus go back to Funky Bones after Gus is already sick, where you see Gus being kind of miserable and mopey and not this, like, paragon of maturity like he seems to be through so much of the movie. But in the book, 
when they're waiting for the plane to Amsterdam, you know, Gus kind of disappears because he can't stand the people staring at him with his leg and Hazel with her oxygen machine and all of that. And there's some more instances of that in the book. Those scenes just kind of make him more of a real person. Hazel sees these things and we see these things through Hazel's eyes and Gus kind of lets himself down around her and not, he doesn't try to put on this act that he does for the rest of the world most of the time.